ASHRAE Standard 62.2 is written primarily to address air quality and ventilation needs in new construction, but there's also a tremendous need to deal with these issues in existing buildings. So the standard also includes information that allows retrofit contractors to apply the concepts to houses going through weatherization and home performance retrofits. The main body of ASHRAE 62.2 maintains a focus on new construction. Existing buildings are addressed in Appendix A. That's where you can find the explanation of how to apply the standard to retrofit work. The main changes relate to exhaust ventilation. Local exhaust fans like range hoods and bath fans contribute to whole building ventilation. The new construction calculations assume that those fans are in place and functioning properly, but existing buildings often don't have local exhaust that meets the specifications in ASHRAE 62.2. Appendix A includes calculations that increase the size of required mechanical ventilation fans to compensate for any shortcomings in the local exhaust systems. This adds another element to the fan sizing calculation. Now the equation is the required mechanical ventilation rate equals the total desired ventilation rate plus the local exhaust deficit minus the rate provided by infiltration. We'll abbreviate that to CFM fan equals CFM total plus CFM exhaust deficit minus CFM infiltration. Another important change is that the infiltration credit is not limited to two thirds of the total desired ventilation rate for existing buildings the way it is for new buildings. So if the house is very leaky, no fan will be required. There's also a change to the base equation. The total desired ventilation rate can now consider the actual number of occupants since it's known in existing buildings. The standard says to consider the actual number of occupants and the number of bedrooms plus one. Use whichever number is higher. This makes sense. If there are more people actually living in the house, provide more ventilation. But if the current occupancy is low, base the rate on the number of bedrooms. The actual occupancy could easily go up in the future if the house is sold or rented to new occupants, or if additional people move in, or if the occupants have children. The local exhaust deficit calculation compares the actual exhaust flow rate to the rates required for new construction in ASHRAE 62.2. The deficit is one-fourth of the difference between the two. It's not stated directly in the standard, but this is presumably because we don't expect local exhaust fans to run all the time. They're typically intermittently operated. In addition, a credit of 20 CFM per room is allowed if one or more operable windows are present in that room to provide additional ventilation as needed. So this calculation must be done for each kitchen and full bathroom in the house. It doesn't apply to half baths because they don't generate any moisture. Tying this all together, we can break the calculations down into three steps. First, as with new buildings, we calculate the total desired ventilation rate using the base formula. Next, we calculate the local exhaust deficit based on actual exhaust flow measurements. And then we'll apply the infiltration credit based on a blower door test result. With those three numbers, it's easy to calculate the whole house continuous CFM requirements. Let's apply these calculations to another example house. We'll use the same floor plan and location as we did with new construction, but change some assumptions. Based on a customer interview, we learned that the house was built in the 1960s and is occupied by a couple with three children. So there are five occupants and the blower door reading is fairly high at 2000 CFM at 50 pascals. We also note that there are operable windows in the kitchen and bathroom, plus the bathroom has an exhaust fan, which we measure at 20 CFM, and the kitchen has a sidewall vent fan that we measure at 70 CFM. Just like the new construction example, our first step is to calculate the total desired ventilation rate. Just as before, the first part of the equation deals with the floor area. So we multiply the 1200 square feet by 0.03. That part again gives us 36 CFM. For the second part, we must now consider the number of occupants. We know that there are five, which is higher than the three bedrooms plus one. So we'll multiply five occupants by 7.5. And that gives us 37.5 CFM to deal with the contaminants generated by five typical occupants. Let's just round that number up to 38. So we need 36, plus 38 for a total of 74 CFM of total desired ventilation.
but that assumes strong local exhaust rates, which isn't the case in this house, so we'll need to add some whole house ventilation to account for this. Here are the steps. First, we measured the actual flow rate through each fan. We visually determined that the kitchen and bathroom each had operable windows. Now we can look up the required flow rate for those rooms. Both fans are operated intermittently, so the kitchen should be 100 CFM and the bathroom should be 50 CFM. The final step is to sum up all of the deficits and divide by 4. Let's run through the actual numbers. Each full bath requires 50 CFM, but gets credit for existing fans and operable windows. The existing bath fan is only providing 20 CFM, but since there's an operable window in the room, we can add another credit of 20 CFM. That results in a net deficit of 10 CFM. Each kitchen requires 100 CFM, but the existing fan provides only 70. Again, we get a 20 CFM credit for an operable window. Note that there are two windows in the kitchen, but you only get one window credit per room regardless of how many windows there are. So the net deficit is 10 CFM for the kitchen. Now we can add up the deficits for the two rooms to get a total net deficit for the house of 10 CFM plus 10 CFM or 20 total CFM. But this deficit is for the fans when they're running. Since they're intermittent, we divide by four to convert them to a continuous CFM flow requirement. 20 CFM divided by four equals five CFM. That's what we need to add to the required whole building ventilation. We're getting close now. The base formula gave us a total required ventilation rate of 74 CFM, but the shortfall in the local exhaust means we have to add another five CFM to compensate. Now all we need is the infiltration credit to finish the calculation. As we saw in the last lesson, for our example house, the weather and shielding factor is 0.48 based on the closest weather station in Trenton. And the S factor is one because it's a one story house. Now we can plug those numbers into the equation with our blower door reading. The estimated natural infiltration is 0.052 times the WSF of 0.48 times the S factor of one times the blower door reading of 2000 CFM. That gives us an estimate of 50 CFM. That's our infiltration credit for this house. We now have all the pieces needed to calculate the required fan size for this existing home. The base formula gave us a total desired ventilation rate of 74 CFM. The local exhaust deficit was 5 CFM and the infiltration credit was 50 CFM. When we combine them, we come up with 74 plus 5 minus 50, which equals 29 CFM. We need to install a fan that can provide at least 29 CFM of continuous ventilation. One other important point to consider is that these calculations must be done using a blower door test result after any air sealing is done, but it may be crucial to figure out if a system is needed before the work is done, so it can be included in the work scope and, if appropriate, in the quote provided to the customer. In order to deal with that situation, auditors must get pretty good at estimating how much effect the air sealing is going to have on the blower door reading. Be conservative. Estimate a big reduction so you don't end up having to install a ventilation fan when you didn't expect it, because you may have to do it at your own or your company's expense. It can be helpful to understand which variables have the biggest impact on the fan size. So I've made four different changes to our example house so you can see the difference it makes. I didn't change the location, the bathroom exhaust, or the presence of operable windows in any of the cases. The first column shows the original calculations, which require a 29 CFM fan. The second column shows the impact of a bigger house. Remember, every additional 100 square feet requires three more CFM. So if the house goes up to 1,800 square feet from 1,200, then the fan must be 18 CFM larger. Now it's 47 CFM of required ventilation instead of 28. If the house is taller, it will have a stronger stack effect and a higher infiltration credit. In this case, if we change the building from one story to three stories, the infiltration credit goes up by 27 CFM and the required fan size goes down to two CFM. If there's less spot ventilation, the local exhaust deficit goes up. If we remove the range hood from this house, the deficit goes from five to 23 CFM. 
and the required fan size goes up to 60 CFM. And finally, if the house is leakier, the infiltration credit goes up. If the blower door test result was 3,000 instead of 2,000 CFM at 50 pascals, the infiltration credit would go up from 50 to 75 CFM, and that would reduce the required fan size down to only 4 CFM. It might have occurred to you that it's silly to go to the expense of installing a fan just to provide 2 or 4 CFM, but the 2013 version of ASHRAE 62.2 requires it. The 2016 version adds a statement that if the calculated fan flow requirement is less than 15 CFM, a system doesn't need to be installed. That makes sense to me, and some programs may have adopted this requirement for use with earlier versions of the standard. Check with your program staff to find out for sure. That's a pretty complicated calculation we just went through, right? Especially when you're worrying about all the other details that go into an audit or a retrofit job. You could certainly make the case that it's too complicated given the uncertainties in the whole situation. Do the occupants smoke? Do they cook at home a lot? Are there pets in the house? This isn't an exact science, though the standard seems to present it as if it were. In any case, your program may require these calculations and there are some computer-based tools that can make it easier. Your program may provide their own spreadsheet or other software to help. Uh, the New Jersey and Oregon WAP programs make a spreadsheet available that was created by Paul Raymer, who's on the ASHRAE committee and does ventilation training. An internet search for ASHRAE 62.2 spreadsheet should bring it up. Or you might want to use a commonly available app. Rick Karg, who's also on the ASHRAE 62.2 committee, has created a web-based calculator called RedCalc that's free to use. You can check it out at residentialenergydynamics.com. We've included a link at the end of this lesson that will take you to a YouTube video tutorial. It explains in detail how to use RedCalc to complete ASHRAE 62.2 calculations. It's highly recommended that you go through it, especially if this is the software your program prefers for calculating the fan size.